Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the video walkthrough for, um, 999. I'm a little confused because our fearless leader, Paul, is not here. <laughs> yes, if this is a mess, we blame Paul. <laughs> because he's not here to, yes. um, prevent <laughs> us from screwing up. <laughs> okay, so let's introduce ourselves. I'm Michael Gray. I'm the person who recorded all this video footage. I am uh, Nicholas Suprek. I am the only other person on staff who has played this game besides Paul. And I keep forgetting if you're the one who likes the game or if Paul's the one who likes it. Uh, Paul's the one who likes this game. You're the one who hates it then. Uh, I, w I, I thought it was pretty bad. Yeah, I wouldn't say I hated it. I've played worse. Okay, well, I think this is actually one of the more exciting parts of the game. Because I think we're, um, this is video number four, Confronting the Killer. So a lot of the things that we've been setting up for are finally actually going to come together. And we're actually going to do things. <laughs> actually, uh, I completely agree. This, I think this part is the most interesting puzzle. And uh, story-wise, I think this part's probably the best, too. So. Yeah, so um, what is this? It's like the fourth hour? Um... Because we're coming yeah. up near the end of the first playthrough, right? So um, this is where things get more interesting. Correct. That usually happens from a story standpoint, though. About two-thirds of the way in, things are supposed to get interesting. Right. Because you, know, you no longer need to introduce the characters or the plot. Right. Yes, at this point, they're no longer lost on the ship and stuff's actually happening. Oh, hey, and there's June. Who is perfectly fine again. Yeah, she's not passed out anymore. I think right now they are uh, collecting different cards that have their faces on them, which will be used in a puzzle later on. Yep, it's a puzzle um, pretty soon, actually. You know, actually, I was going to complain about the whole June getting sick thing, because it happens sometimes, and other times it doesn't. Uh -huh. But I found out that's on purpose. Right, correct. There, there's a reason for why she, or there's supposed to be a reason for when it's, she's getting it's sick. It's supposed to be a clue. I don't think this is a spoiler alert. Um, I don't I, think it's a spoiler to say that the sicker right. she is, that means you picked a wrong door to go through. Right. <laughs> Which is um, it's sort of a pain because you only know if you've done something wrong after you've done it. There's, I don't, I don't think there's any clues beforehand about which doors you need to go through. Yeah. But that totally did not cross my mind when I was playing the game <laughs> myself, so I thought she was getting sick for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, I couldn't tell either. There was, I'm not sure if you went to the same site, but the author has a, I did, yeah. a site full of questions. Okay, yeah, that's why I found out about it. Paul wants, I don't know if he told you, but he wants to do a bonus video of us going through all those questions. Okay, that's actually a good idea. Because it actually helps explain the plot of the game a little bit. Yes. Yeah, after I finished, I had very little idea what was going on, but after I read through, I had little, some idea, not much still. Yeah, well, in, in your defense, like, a third of the questions, the answer was because it makes the game more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> because it's logical. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is true. Okay, so we are exploring this cargo hold and, yes, finding pictures. Yes. So, um, here's a question. Why do they call it nine hours, nine persons, nine doors, instead of nine hours, nine people, nine doors? <laughs> Always bugged me. I don't know. Maybe that's just, like, a poor translation. I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this, um, if we do make a bonus video going over all the questions and answers, I'll have to wonder if the uh, person who wrote this game actually speaks English. <laughs> Because he makes, he makes a pun in English, but that could just be the translator having fun. <laughs> yeah, that's possible. Yeah. And June likes the picture of a uh, J-Dog. Yeah. <laughs> that's his modeling shot. That's his headshot he uses for uh, modeling gigs. Oh, and she says they're not a couple. <laughs> Junpei <laughs> just cried inside. <laughs> well, well, their cards were together, so... I know, I mean... Even uh, Zero knows that they're a couple. Aw, oh, come on, June. Don't be shy. <laughs> She's got very low self-esteem. 
You know, I... <laughs> oh, that's a line. I know guys go for women who look like Lotus. <laughs> June is feeling a little underwhelmed. <laughs> she is. She got very defensive for no reason here. No, she's defensive. I, apparently she's upset because guys say that she's flat-chested. <laughs> apparently she's been getting this a lot that she looks like a trash can. Yeah, no, she said like someone? cutting board. I think that's what they... <laughs> I don't know. What, what word do you use to make fun of girl for being flat-chested? I've never done that. <laughs> Neither have I, but apparently trash can or cutting board both, uh, both work well. Well, cutting boards are flat. That's what I was thinking. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So, Trash cans, I, I don't quite understand. Because but... I remember... Wow, the things I remember. Um, In seventh grade, somehow this came up. The teacher was the teacher was saying, don't make fun of the other girls for that reason. Because she, was re she remembers when she herself, the teacher was in high school, and they called one girl sunken chest. Huh. <laughs> they gave her really low self-esteem, and she was crying or something like that, and... I had no idea what they were talking about. I was like, are they talking about pirate treasure or something? <laughs> what was going on in this class that this came up? I don't know, but, you know, so I, I went home. It's like, what is with this pirate treasure stuff? <laughs> What's going on? And then I ended up getting a long lecture. So that's how this horrifying experience has stuck in my mind. <laughs> What was that about Clover? We talked over it. Um, something that Clover's smile makes June feel cold. <laughs> and Santa thinks he's a good-looking son of a... <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I think that was an interesting line that June said. She feels um, inferior compared to Clover because Clover has nicer skin. Yes, that's when when you look at her card. That's what she says because she doesn't look like Lotus, and Clover has nicer skin. Hmm. Uh oh. Well. <laughs> mm hmm. You just walked into the room. Sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was, I was I'm being quiet because some person <laughs> walked in the room. <laughs> Well, well, Ace just refused to look at his headshot, and um, that that actually is a little bit of a clue as well for later on. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this clue is going to come into fruition in like five minutes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so not much later on. Okay, so um, Ace is given all the cards, so he's going to put all the cards in the um, boxes to solve this puzzle. I'm waiting for another picture of June. I forget if it's her or Clover, which has like the dots along their eyes or something. Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh oh. June is dying. <laughs> <laughs> we picked the wrong answer. We went through the wrong door. <laughs> but in order to get the right answer, you need to go through the wrong doors first. Yeah. Or she's just faking it to get attention from him. <laughs> which, which... Or she just doesn't want to help with the puzzle. She's like, I'm just going to lay down over here. That has been my theory all along, you know. She <laughs> she apparently doesn't think that she can get um, his attention by being attractive, so she's um, pretending to be the damsel <laughs> in distress technique. <laughs> the things you learn from video games... <laughs> This is, uh, actually I'm writing this in a review that I'm writing for Game Cola um, about Harvest Moon. It's like, if you try to use the Harvest Moon um, technique in real life of getting somebody to marry you. <laughs> so I went to the girl next door and I gave her a, a handful of sticks and she just thought I was weird. <laughs> or uh, if you try the Fable 2 method where you flex in their face for a while, that also does not work. Or the Prince of Persia method, where you kiss a girl, and then you rewind time to make it so that you haven't <laughs> kissed her. <laughs> Does not work. No, it, it looks like um, June has a reasonably clear face. Yeah, I don't see um, anything wrong with her complexion, but um, I think she just has low self-esteem. Mm. 
is all the boys say she looks like a cutting board. I wonder what guy she's hanging out with, because she's clearly not <laughs> hanging out with Junpei, who um, no. <laughs> has nothing but nice things to say about her. She's hanging out with jerks. She's probably hanging out with Santa. Yep. <laughs> he seems like the kind of guy who would who would say that to girls. Ooh, and plot point. Ace is in charge of the pharmaceutical company. Mm. So why did this come up? They wanted to get her drugs to uh, cure her um, disease? Yes, they need to get her to a hospital, yeah. is what uh, Santa had said. Oh yeah, I totally spoiled this in the previous video when Ace drugged himself up. <laughs> I said I knew what he was doing the whole time because he's the head of a, a company that makes this <laughs> particular drug. The police and military forces like to use it to suppress the crowd and clear the room. <laughs> by, by what, injecting them? I'm not sure. It injects them and it makes them unconscious for um, <laughs> however long, half hour. It doesn't seem very uh, like a good way to go about things. Like you need some sort of gas so you can disperse it quickly. Yeah, it seems like. <laughs> How would the police do that? Well, it it took Ace out very quickly, right? That is correct. It took him about half a minute from the injection to uh, unconsciousness. Yeah, I mean that's true, but I mean that's a lot of needles for the police to carry around at one time. Yeah. And plus, you think people, if it's very easily accessible, you think people would use it for date rape and other... <laughs> yeah, yeah much worse things, yeah. What exactly, um, I think Paul and I discussed this earlier, but we kind of said, what exactly is around Santa's neck? Is that just a scarf, or...? Oh, it's a scarf, yeah. He's, um... I don't know if it's... I need to see the picture of them again. I've seen somebody wear a scarf just like June, actually, over a sweater like that. Mm -hmm. So that work, you can pull it off in real life. I thought it looked nice. But Santa's? <laughs> just a random scarf. All right. Or I think it's maybe, it's probably more leather than scarf to make him look, you know, sort of punk. Because he's sort of a punk, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Ace is sweating because he can't solve the puzzle. <laughs> so this is interesting. Um... I don't know if I should ask the question now or later. I'll ask it now. Um, we found out that he has what's that disease? Presboyia. <laughs> no, no, no. There's a lot of letters in there. The other disease, the one that you can't recognize faces. Oh, prosop something, right? Yeah, prosopo prosopagnosia or something like that. There we go. Yes. Which is a disease in real life, but. Does it also work with photographs rather than just people? It's a good question. I, I was assuming that it works with all faces, so even photographs of faces would be uh, difficult to recognize, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm not positive. Yeah, well, here's a helpful flashback for people who don't remember it. <laughs> for people like us who have been taking months between each like part. Well, I think it's fairly common, you know, in some cases, to be confused about the people that you're close to. Um, I mean, for example, you know, <laughs> parents will call their children by the wrong name. <laughs> Correct. Happens, happens a lot in our family. Mo Mom is calling for me, and she calls out another kid's name by mistake. <laughs> or I'll call my sister by the wrong name. Okay, so Junpei decides to keep this information to himself rather than sharing it. Uh, I guess that makes sense. Would you have shared this information with everybody? 
Um, at this time, I probably wouldn't have thought it's that suspicious. I might not have said anything. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm on Wikipedia right now, and it does say that. Uh, where is it? Uh, people with prosopagnosia may be unable to identify the people in pictures, even. Okay. So uh, according to Wikipedia, photos and and faces both difficult. Well, presumably it depends on uh, what kind of photo, right? Probably. If it was a I full, if it was a full body photo, he probably would have been able to recognize them by the clothes they're wearing. That yeah, that's correct. It's it's just like faces. Which leads to the question: Why is it? Why are there pictures of the people? I mean, when were those pictures taken? Because <laughs> they're, they're all wearing the exact same clothes they're wearing now here on the ship. So either they don't change their clothes very often, or the pictures were taken, you know, sometime recently. Right. <laughs> yeah, you have to wonder if these people ever wear different outfits. Either that or they posed for some photos right before they all got kidnapped. Well, the dialogue, um, Junpei seemed very upset that they were taking the pictures. Like, when did he take this picture of me? <laughs> I don't, I don't agree, po I don't remember agreeing to this. <laughs> okay, so you can go upstairs for the puzzle. Here we go. Or not. Okay, here's the puzzle. I'm not sure I really enjoyed this puzzle. Oh, really? I think this one was... Or this part was of the one? puzzle. This part of the puzzle where you have to do um, addition. Oh, yeah. No, this one. Not this one. The, it's, I think it's the one right after. Yeah. So you have to push this around that I like. That, that was a good puzzle. Wow, and they take forever to explain the puzzle to us. <laughs> Which is somewhat common in this game, actually. They, yeah, I've, <laughs> there are times where they just pretty much give you the answer to the puzzle by explaining it so much. Well, in their defense, this particular puzzle is kind of complicated. Even after the explanation, I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. The digital route? Therefore, three lights turn on. Okay, yeah, I'm totally lost now. Um, <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense, Santa. <laughs> Maybe he was invited on board because he's a math genius. <laughs> he, he was just able to add all those things up. I still think it's more suspicious that Lotus was on board when she just happened to be a computer expert, which is exactly what they needed for the one puzzle. Yeah. And that was one of the questions um, on the interview with the person who made the game. You know, they're asking, why is she on there? That seems to be the only reason for her to be there. It's because they needed a computer expert for that one. <laughs> and that's it. Wow, they're still explaining the puzzle. I still... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Santa, we're so bored. Let, just let us try. Yeah, you want to turn all the lights on, which is pretty basic. That happens a lot in video games. <clears throat> you know, you've got a bunch of buttons to press, and you want to turn on all the lights. Okay, so now here's another recap. Okay. <laughs> you have to put pins into the holes, fill up all the holes... And then those digital routes will turn on or off. I think that's what it's saying. Correct, yeah. The the digital route of the top three and the digital route of the bottom three will both turn on and off. And you have to use all six, or you have to fill all six holes. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think I just looked up the answer on the internet. <laughs> Okay, one, three, and four. So that turns on two lights. Yeah, one, three, and four, the jewelry was eight. Uh, I forget what the other one you used was, but it added up to 22, and then that digital route is four. Okay, yeah, no, never mind. I probably solved this my, myself. 
Because you'll notice I did 1, 2, and then the next higher number, and then I always did 9, 8. Mm -hmm. So I, um, somehow I used that as a pattern to figure out which ones to light. But I basically solved this all off screen, and then I um, put in the numbers afterwards, so you guys wouldn't have to see me <laughs> try again and again and fail. An F. We got an F. <laughs> we failed anyway. And we got to do it again, but this is the part of the game which really made no sense to me. Hexadecimal. So F yeah. is hexadecimal for, um, 16? Um, I think so. I forget. I don't know. What's hexadecimal? <laughs> I learned it in this game, then promptly forgot. It's like if you use a base 9... No, it's a base 16 system. Rather than our number system, which is like a base base ten, and we tell time on a base twelve. Um, oh, does that, that make sense, sense to you at all? Yes. <laughs> yes. So I guess if you work by groups of sixteen, I don't know why you would, but um, <laughs> in our numerical system, it's represented by F. I think this one here is a little bit of a pain. You have to get everything, the vertical and horizontal, to add up to 15, since F is 15 in hexadecimal. Well, that's not that bad. Um, but it would be better if it just wrote 15. It's like a symmetric <laughs> square where you have to do 15. I, I mean, because Santa basically comes out and tells you that F is 15 anyway, so they might as well have just put 15 there. Yeah, okay, so all that, all that was to give us the good puzzle. <laughs> here we go. The Pushotron, or the Pusher 2000, or something like that. Yeah, why did they have pins? Why couldn't they just have used a touch screen or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's because it's an old ship. No, but that has to be brand new technology they made for this ship. The Pushmaster 5000. <laughs> Sounds like some sort of wor um, workout device. <laughs> it does. I like how they've made like this Pushmaster 5000, where I think it'd probably be easier just to have some guy come around and push these crates. Mm -hmm. They don't look like they're that heavy. Well, there's the electrified fence in between. Oh, that's true. By the way, that fence you guys are looking at is electrified. <laughs> so we're going to push around the boxes in order to try to make a... Um, I don't know. What are we doing? I think you want to push all the boxes over to the coffin. right. Yeah, you, you can kind of see a coffin in the upper right, in the left yes. screen. So we want to make a path to that, because it's very interesting. And it's on battery power. <laughs> Right, let's give this a try. Let's see how long it takes me to solve this puzzle. <laughs> I think I probably, um, ooh, 50 moves. Okay. I probably stopped at the start of the puzzle and then, you know, tried it like five times and then started recording it. <laughs> so, this one I remember taking me a while. I think the first time I figured out I did it in like, it would have taken me 52 moves, so it wouldn't have worked anyway. Mm -hmm. So I had to redo it. I haven't seen these puzzles very often in video games, but when I have, they, they've they always seemed very interesting to me. I like these puzzles. Okay, so <clears throat> you want to move them all to the yellow area. Correct. And it's basically a matter of realizing which order they have to go in. Is that right? I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so cause I'm gonna go down from here. And now I'm trying to figure, do I move this one right, or do I move the other? <laughs> do, I have, do I have enough rooms? But I have to... I think I can do 
do it. Yeah. yeah. The tricky part about that puzzle is, is you don't want to accidentally move one of the boxes into a corner because then it's stuck there and you have to restart. Yeah. And computer animation, very nice. <laughs> That's the part they decide to computer animate. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's the only part in the game is the box push. You know, Paul mentioned this in a previous video. It seems like the puzzles were made independently of the game, and he's right. They were. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that now, that the, the, puzzle, the puzzle adventure game puzzle sections were being made at the same time as the rest of the game, and they were being made by two different companies. Okay, so inside the coffin, 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 we find. What are we going to find? That wasn't a very funny joke, Santa. No. <laughs> You're wasting our time, Santa. Yeah, seriously. Don't you realize you only have like two hours <laughs> to live? It looks like a cotton swab and a gun. Well, that's the gun. key. It's a key. <laughs> it <was> a key. <laughs> and a loaded gun. Yeah, June sort of does have little lines under her eyes, but I always thought those were supposed to be um eyebrows. <laughs> oh, I thought that was like blush or whatever the makeup is you put underneath the eyes. It's not very... I mean... You should... <laughs> Not that I'm a makeup expert, but you think you'd want to um, have it be more um, rounded out, I guess, if it was. Because oh. those just look like lines. I think you'd rub it in, make it smooth all over. Yeah. Make sure you watch our next video where Michael and I give everyone makeup tips, since we are experts on this. Rouge, rouge, yeah. What's the rouge? Thing? Green, blush, and rouge. Rouge is red. <laughs> That's all I know. Because it's French, right? That's the word for red in French. Um, sure. I didn't. I know it's rojo in Spanish, but I did not take French in high school, so I, I can't say. Me neither. It sounds about right, though. Blanc. Uh, blanc is white. Blue is blue. I don't know, I'd have to replay the Nancy Drew game where she goes to France. <laughs> okay, so our heroes decide to leave the gun there. Is that a good idea or not? Um, I think if they actually left the gun there, it'd be a good idea. But um, if you're trusting everyone else not to take the gun, then, then you, you might run into a little bit of a problem. Let me see, do I trust these people? I'll, I'll trust June not to steal a gun, but Santa? Santa always seemed kind of sketchy to me, so I don't know. And then Ace, who... Is an unknown factor. Yeah. Who's willing to drug people, or... <laughs> but if I was Junpei, I would just be very careful to make sure that everybody is with me when I go to the door, rather than yes. just have June with me. Oh, Ace is there. <laughs> Is Santa there? Oh, Santa's there, too. Eh. I don't know, would you leave the gun there? What use would you have to take the gun with you? Um, I don't know, so you found a locked door, then your solution to that puzzle could be shoot the, the lock. Yeah, you're right, this is an adventure game where you're supposed to take everything you find with you. <laughs> That's how it works in adventure games. I mean, I've taken parrots with hooks in them in, in adventure games. Not taking a gun seems like that could be a useful tool. Okay, yeah, it's saying here that rouge is French for red. And in the UK, instead of calling it blush, they call it blusher. Blusher? Hmm, interesting. We'll have to have Matt Jonas confirm that for us. Okay. Okay, so we're at the elevator, and this elevator goes up.
You know what? Without Paul here, I think the uh, amount of insults directed towards this game has gone down dramatically. <laughs> As someone who hates or who likes it. Yeah, I, I know we're asking, is it really a smart idea to leave the gun there? But we're not asking that in a way that's making fun of these characters. <laughs> well, at this point, we know at least one of them is a killer, right? Yes, we, we know someone is dead. Someone and is someone... dead, and someone deliberately killed them. Maybe even two people work to get yes. kill that person. So I would take the gun with me for safety, to be honest. Yes, because at least I know I'm not the killer. Well, everybody seems to trust Junpei uh, explicitly, or implicitly. I don't know which word to use there. <laughs> everybody trusts him. Way. Yes. They trusted him not to cheat when they, uh, you know, did the voting for who goes through what door. Yes, which they shouldn't have, but yeah. Uh-oh, we found the number nine door. And painted in rouge for all of our uh, <laughs> French viewers. <laughs> this person is using a lot of makeup to paint the doors. You have to wonder what he painted that with. It's not blood. <laughs> Just really sloppy paints, job. <laughs> I know, it's like he did it with his hand or something. Or he just sort of threw it at the door. Did we confirm that it's not blood? Wasn't that somewhere else in this game? I feel like the first door, they said it wasn't blood, but I'm not positive now. Well, where would they get the blood from? <laughs> Maybe they work at a hospital. Well, it has to be some blood fresh. I don't know. That's true, because it's still red. Yeah, I guess it's just paint. It's, I mean, it's just a terrible paint job. So now we have found a second nine door, which is uh, which is important, because everyone could have gone through if everyone was there now. That's a twist. That's a twist. So you thought there was only one nine door, and so they'd have to fight over who gets to go through and who gets to be saved. Yes. But now that there are two nine doors, they can all go to safety and live happily ever after. Or they could have if they had everyone with them. You're right. So who automatically gets left behind now that they no longer have Snake's bracelet? Hmm, it's a good question. I think it's probably seven. Two plus seven is nine. Yeah, I think you're right. Is there any other way seven could get through? Well, he could go with somebody else and they could leave, you know, like a different person behind, <laughs> presumably. Yes. Yeah. Or they could just, you know, go back and get the number two thing from uh, Snake's corpse. <laughs> which, yeah, which they probably should have done. They should have been picking up these bracelets, but... Because they'll need it even if the person's not alive. Oh, well. Right. <laughs> yeah, all nine people could have gone through safely. So what was your opinion on the game? I'm not sure if we asked you last time. I liked this game, to be honest. Um, it was one of those games where um, I didn't want to put it down. I think particularly like with this section, it's like two hours or so of um, interesting things happening all the time and me not wanting to you know, turn it off and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it definitely the setup to this game I thought was really good. And my first time through, I played it. Like pretty much straight to the end because I thought it was really interesting. Um, but it, my main problem was I don't I don't like looking in facts to try and find out the answers to stuff. But I I had no other way to try and find the good ending in this game was to look it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they have clues about what the correct thing to do is, but it's sort of impossible to pick up on those because there's so <laughs> much dialogue. <laughs> There were two doors. No need to kill each other. Yeah, I think what you'd have to do is, um, I guess, go through each door separately and just come up with a list of the important plot points you learn when you go through each door. Yes, I mean, it's sort of like you have to play through it a couple times, I think, mm -hmm. to figure it out. Yeah, so if you go through door number five, you find out about um, uh, the safe. 
But if you go through door number four, you get the four leaf clover. Correct. So I think, yeah, that's what you'd have to do if you wanted to play this game legitimately uh, by yourself, is do it over and over and over again, and just keep track of what's behind each particular door. Could door nine be opened with three of them? It's taking them a long time to get through this. They're, they're going through <laughs> all the um, possible ramifications of going through the door. <laughs> They've got like a pencil and paper out. One, three, and five is nine. But that would leave June behind. <laughs> I mean, if it was Santa, then he would have done it, but not June. Yeah, totally. But I'm surprised he even bothered to think. I mean, my first instinct would be to go back and get the others. Right. I mean, because there are two number nine doors. Yes, there, yeah. It would be incredibly horrible just to leave leave all the other people behind. Who are the other people? <laughs> Let's see, there's uh, Lotus, Clover. And Santa. Seven. Seven, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'll get to go to Atlanta? <laughs> oh, Atlantis. Oh, you're an idiot, Junpei. <laughs> the mythical city of Atlanta. Okay, so Junpei is very happy that they don't want to leave, <laughs> leave <laughs> June behind. Which might be a decision they might have to make in the future. I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't actually gone through the math here to see if they can fit everyone else through but one person. Mm -hmm. So that's the math I would be going through my head as we walked back to find the other people. Right. Because hopefully our heroes were smart and decided, you know, like in an hour or so, we'd meet up at this place. They didn't pick a meeting spot, did they? I don't think so. <laughs> they didn't. No meeting spot, no meeting time. <laughs> but it's not like they're in a rush or anything. Oh, okay, okay. But, I mean, that would be the smart thing to do. Because if, say, the other team meets up with some horrible fate and they all get eaten by alligators or something, eventually they would have to make the decision, sorry, June, we have to leave you behind. I mean, yeah, they are on a time limit here. And they don't know this yet, but there are lots of puzzles behind those number nine doors. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's, that's not just one puzzle left for them to do. Yeah, see, that was something that caught me off guard. I thought, as soon as you go through the number nine door, you're safe. I That's also what I thought. I thought, okay, I'm almost done, and then it's like, oh, I've got to stay up another three hours. Yeah, but no, it's got a um, bunch of puzzles there, and you have to get off the ship, and then you're safe. Yes. <laughs> so I just presume that I was right to begin with. <laughs> because how much time do we have left? Because... You know, I don't know how much time they have left in the game, but I presume that the time limit stopped as soon as they went through the number nine door. Yeah. Because they had like half an hour left at that point, and it <laughs> took them much longer after that. So the um, the coffin was just knocking, but it only started knocking right after they all left the room. Oh, I didn't quite hear that. I guess it's because I was talking. But, well, it's also, it's not very loud, so just to let the audience know, there is a, there's a knocking in the coffin. You think whoever is in the coffin would try to knock harder? Yeah, or at least do it when they were still in the room talking. Yeah. He didn't want to be rude. He didn't want to be rude. Oh, okay. Okay, so they found the other guys waiting for them. <laughs> that was fortunate. Wait, where's Clover? She's gone. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. What happened to her? <laughs> What door did they go through? They went through the prisons, right? I think so. They either went through the prisons or the captain's quarters. And when Clover goes through the captain's quarters, she grabs an axe from there and starts <laughs> killing everybody. So she must That's have, one of the bad endings. So she must have gone through the prisons. Yeah, so she went through the prisons. No way. Yeah, it's the prisons, apparently. 
because if they went through the captain's quarters, they'd mention um, a certain thing in there, which I'm not going to spoil. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's something important in there. Yeah, okay. This is a strange plot point, because I know Clover finds a piece of paper in the captain's quarters, which is a solution to the, um, the safe puzzle, which we might actually solve in this video. Yeah, we're gonna do that in this video. But I mean, how many people when they're playing this game for the first time find that combination and decide, oh, that's obviously the combination to the safe? <laughs> I don't know how they make that connection. <laughs> so, uh, Zero could have been a little bit more obvious for um, which clue, I mean, what that is for. Yeah. Uh-oh, and Junpei wants to go to the shower room. <laughs> June. Oh, sure, it's because he wants to find Clover, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's a body in the shower room, Junpei. That's not a romantic location. I know. I don't know. I don't think Junpei's very good with romance. <laughs> Probably not. I don't think any of our characters are very particularly romantic. <laughs> Junpei and June, uh, what do you call it? Puppy love? Shy puppy love? I don't know what yeah, you call it. That sounds about right. Yeah. June always looks really cold, or shy, or nervous, I can't tell. She's shy, slash nervous. And I think it's partially because she's around her, her crush. I don't know, how realistic is that? How? When was the last time they saw each other? I'm sorry, the only thing I care about is the romance, <laughs> but... <laughs> it, had, well, it, it had to be like, what, 10, 15 years ago, right? 10 years? Because they were kids. You think you'd be over it by now. <laughs> I think we would have found someone else and moved on. Apparently not, because all the other guys say that June looks like a cutting board. Yeah, all the other guys were horrible. <laughs> but you think, eh, I guess it still makes him nervous ten years afterwards, the girl he sort of liked. <laughs> oh, and here's where Junpei is finally going to figure it out. The pieces fell into place. <laughs> Luckily, he went back to look at the body one more time. Junpei remembered something Clover had told him in the laboratory. See, if he was listening to me spoil it... And yeah, there's Clover. She has bigger dots underneath her eyes. <laughs> so her skin is not as... I would say her skin is less clear than June's. Than June's, yeah. And also, plus for June, she does not have a big pink afro. <laughs> yeah. Um, people seem to like her pink hair, though. Yeah, I guess. So, uh, the important part here is that Clover had told Junpei that, um... Snake has a fake Snake, arm. yeah. Yeah. And this dead body clearly had two real arms, so that could be Snake. <laughs> Luckily, uh, Junpei very closely examined both the arms of the corpse. Where are you guys? I'm not doing voices <laughs> again, don't <laughs> forget that. I mean, that sounded like a good seven. Seven needs to have a deeper voice, though, because he's a big person. I, I don't think I can really do a big deep... Whoa, Clover's dead? Who killed her? Hmm. No, this is a legitimate question. Who had time to kill her? I mean, we're going to confront the killer in this video, because <laughs> that's the name of this video, but... Uh -huh. <laughs> if you couldn't tell before, we're going to find the killer this time. Now this person is a serial killer. So the, the person went after the brother-sister pair. Mm -hmm. But my question is going to be when this person had time to commit the murder. You can't quite tell from right now what she was killed with. Yeah. So, okay, so the person obviously um, kidnapped her when she was in the room with the other people. 
because they were saying she went through the fourth door by, by herself and then somebody blocked the door so I'm thinking she went through the fourth door by herself the person kidnapped her and blocked the door and then so for some reason took her all the way up here to kill her <laughs> it's possible or the other possibility is um, they were the first person to find her when they split up and then killed her Ooh, I guess you're right but then why did she disappear? Um, so I think that's... Then why did... I'm sure if I should say the something. the door behind her. Yeah. <laughs> that part, I don't, I don't know why she left the door behind her. But I think she disappeared right away because she was looking for something. I think it was something actually you already mentioned. Something she found. And maybe she put two and two together. Oh, Oh, so she found the combination to the uh, the safe and decided to come back here to where the safe is. That's I possible so. because she never saw that. That's oh, that is true. She hmm. was a part of the party that came through here and went to the safe. She found the combination, or she found. That is true. Yeah, I don't know then. Maybe she was just wandering around. Yeah, she found the clue, which contains the combination to the safe. But she shouldn't have any idea the safe <laughs> about the safe. She didn't go through the door. So did we find out what killed her? Was she stabbed? Was she shot? I think she was stabbed. If I had to guess, it'd probably be stabbed. It didn't look like she had any bullet wounds. But um, I'm not... I wasn't reading along, but I'm not sure if they found... We didn't get a very close look at the body, though. No. Well, I know that one of the bad endings to the game is the knife ending, where somebody stabs um, Junpei. Mm -hmm. And we we never learn who that person is, I guess, so... No, yeah. You can only guess. Yeah, that was a teaser of an ending, I guess. <laughs> somebody <laughs> shows up to jump... Somebody shows up behind him and stabs him, and as he's dying, he turns around and sees his killer, and they don't tell you who it is. It says, just says, the end. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> that was the first ending I got. I was like, well, I'm going to have to play the game again now, because that was totally unsatisfying. That was a mean choose-your-own-adventure ending. <laughs> That's the choose-your-own-adventure part of this game coming into play. <laughs> so is Seven saying he found her in the bathroom? I don't know why he decided to go to the bathroom, but <laughs> he really he had... He had to use it. Yeah. Well, he seemed completely confused by the toilet earlier on, wasn't he? <laughs> so is he saying that she was still alive when he showed up? No, I think he's saying that when he got there, she was already dead. Okay. And Junpei's wondering why, why he decided to leave the door open. You know, he's stuck uh -huh. in between the door. Which is something they should have been doing all along. Uh -huh. That's the only good idea Seven has had this whole time. And Junpei's using this to accuse Seven of being the murderer. He's like, well, you're the one who wanted to come back to this room. <laughs> I don't know. Seven has good instincts, right? He's a cop. He is. That is correct. I'm not sure if um, that's been they know that yet. yet yeah. though, right? I'm not sure that's been confirmed. He hasn't gotten his memory back no um, you have to go through a different door with him there to for him to get his memory back yeah so he's got good instincts but you know due to the memory loss i guess he's not working very well <laughs> or he's faking memory loss and he's just stupid <laughs> Sort of a stereotype to say that the big guy has to be stupid. <laughs> I started going off that assumption when he kept trying to open locked doors that people had tried to open before him. Uh, well, he's a really big guy. Maybe he could rip the door off his hinges. <laughs> he looks like the kind of guy who's used to bashing open doors, especially <laughs> if he's like a police officer or something. <laughs> Because he'd be the guy, you know, you know, if I was in a police raid, I would have him kick down the door. <laughs> and there's rust under the safe. Somebody has already opened the safe. Wow, plot points. Mm. Plot points, which hopefully will be resolved by the end of this video, I hope. <laughs> I think so, we got 40 minutes left, so...
I guess 50 minutes left. Let me see. This video is going to end with us opening the coffin. So, yeah. We're going to we're going to resolve all the plot lines up here on the upper upper floors. So, where are the other people? It's just him and Seven examining the corpse. Hey, I, I, I mean, the other people were there. They found they were in the other room, but for some reason they're not coming along to look. They just had nothing to say. Yeah. And for some reason, they let Junpei, you know, wander off by himself. I think in a situation like that, I would just make sure everybody <laughs> sticks together at all yeah. times. Yeah, for now on, we're in a group. No one's going off on their own anymore. People keep dying that way. Like I said earlier, it's like, well, you know what? <laughs> make sure everybody's with me. Don't don't give anybody the opportunity to go back and get gone. <laughs> Why did he decide to take another look at the dead body again? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Junpei's kind of morbid in this video. This is the second dead body he's gone back to check out. I mean, it, it turns out to be important, but... Yeah, he's gone back, and... The important thing, of course, is that somebody has stolen the, um... The wristband for the ninth man. Yes. I mean, which someone should have done right away anyway, just if they were paying attention to the game. Mm -hmm. So this allows Junpei to figure out who the killer is. I mean, who killed Snake, right? Well, I guess it's not Snake, but 2 plus 9 plus something equals whatever number was on the door. So there's only one particular person who, using the, the 9 bracelet and Snake's bracelet, could have opened the door to kill him. Oh, there you are. Were you looking for something in the hallway? <laughs> How was it doing? I take it back. I think that's the perfect voice for Seven. <laughs> what voice was that? That's like my on and off Canadian voice. I don't know. <laughs> like your go Gomer Pyle. Yeah. No, that's the voice I use for um, uh, the Disney character Goofy. Goofy, okay. <laughs> I can see that. How's it that's going, Mickey? Oh, yuck. <laughs> it's not a very good impersonation. I used to do a better one. <laughs> Goofy hasn't been on TV in years. There's been no reason for me to keep that voice up to date. <laughs> see, if Paul was here, we would start talking about a the, the Goofy movie, but let's, let's be on topic. Wow, her hand has changed color. Does that usually happen? I don't think this quickly. Like, uh, I mean, it, it, like the body will change color once, I mean, the blood Eventually, is left. Yeah, but she hasn't even been dead for an hour. Yeah. But perhaps... That's what, that's what June meant by... See, look, she's got way better skin than in a clover here. That looks terrible. <laughs> yeah. Truth of gone, truth of gone, and truth of gone. See, this is the most obscure puzzle ever, Zero. <laughs> you think he would just write the number, which is the combination to the safe. <laughs> uh -huh. Or it's not. It's, it's left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, something like that. Yeah. Because sinister meaning left. Yeah, sinister hand. That's the left hand. Well, and it comes from the Latin word sinistra, meaning left. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a common knowledge most people have, though. Most people don't know about sinister being left, or the Latin <laughs> term. <laughs> That's how I memorized it in Latin class, but that's just me. <laughs> I forget where it came up. I think... No, it was That would have been before this game. I don't know. Everybody always thought left was evil, right? Left and sinister. That's why you shake hands with the right hand. I will trust you on that one. I did not... I, I, I cannot confirm nor deny this. 
Oh, well, I can talk more to confirm or deny it, but um, traditionally people have been... <laughs> have not trusted left-handed people. I mean, I don't, but I, I didn't know that was tradition. Oh, it's tradition, and the, the word for um, left is sinister. <laughs> the word for left is sinister. Why is the internet not working? I want to access my dictionary. <laughs> Yeah, sinister, okay, the Latin dictionary says sinister means left, on the left, on the left, and at the left side. And then the other other definitions are awkward, wrong, perverse, perverse, and improper. <laughs> Man, left-handed people have it rough. Yeah, so ever since, um, this is something we've inherited from the Romans, I guess. The Romans... <laughs> The word for left was also a word for, like, sinister evil. So I guess that's why they didn't really trust uh, left-handed people. That's where it came from. This has been your interesting game call effect of the day. Yeah. Well, they take forever to solve... The... Well, they don't take forever to solve the puzzle, but when he presses the buttons on his watch in the order indicated by the poem... He gets this combination, or that series of numbers, which happens to be the combination to the safe. Correct. It is also the combination to something else. Mm-hmm. It's the combination to his gym locker. <laughs> He's got a bag of uh, chips, half bag of chips in there. <laughs> You're saving it for later. <laughs> Well, I mean, clearly, how does he input those numbers into the safe? Yeah, there's no keypad. Is that a dial? Uh, I guess it must be a spin lock, but there are clearly no numbers on the lock. He says there are, but I, I don't see it. I didn't see any either. Okay. Okay, so right, left, right, left, right, left. Which is something I could never do. O <laughs> open a combination lock for my locker. I could never do that. No, that, that was always uh, way too hard for me. Well, the trick is you have to go all the way around past the zero when you're turning it left. Or something like that. It makes no sense why you would have to go around an extra time. Yeah. But here are the facts. No, no, the notary game was played once nine years ago. Snake um, played the game nine years ago. The Cradle Pharmaceuticals... Uh-oh. Mm. He planned the game nine years ago? Why do you think their names are all very Japanese? <laughs> no, It was a Japanese company. Oh, okay, but, I mean, why didn't they translate the names, or replace them with, say, <laughs> English equivalents? I mean, that is a good question, since they did translate the entire game, so... All these very Japanese names are speaking English with everyone. Well, Junpei is, was untranslated, as was June's real name, Akane, but... That's true. Akane Kurashiki, but all these other names are... <laughs> close enough. June is a real name. It's a real girl's name. April, May, and June. Those were the months, which are also girls' names, aren't they? Yeah. There's actually a Phoenix Wright character called April, May. Yeah. And, um, apparently, you know DuckTales? I do know DuckTales. So, apparently, in the originals, there were a, a set of triplets April, May, and June as a counterpart to a uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Hmm. The triplet That phase. I did not know. But they decided to cut them out because they figured that'd be way too many characters to keep track of. <laughs> Which again, I think is something um, I don't know, how many series do you have where they have like triplets or twins? It's sometimes hard to distinguish between the two of them. Yes, I, like, 
even in like the Harry Potter series, I always had a hard time distinguishing between Fred and George. And that was when someone... on purpose too, though. <laughs> as soon as someone tells me someone's like a twin or a triplet, I just that's all I associate them with. Well, I had um, yeah, I had three sets of twins in my class, and I couldn't tell them apart. <laughs> Actually, the two girl twins I could tell apart, Irene and Sophia, but um, still. They have different hair colors. I guess they they must be fraternal twins rather than identical twins. Yeah. But they still, you know, would always wear matching outfits. Maybe one of them just dyed her hair. Uh, no, they're in fourth grade. They're probably not dyeing their hair. <laughs> probably not likely. But one, one of, hair is a much darker shade than her sister's. But with the two boy twins, they're they're identical twins. They cut their hair differently on purpose to distinguish between the two of them, but I still can't tell which one is which. Oh well. Okay, so what's going on now? They're trying to get into uh, the uh, the door number three, the door that they found the first dead body in. Okay, so he's he's testing to make sure that you don't actually have to press your hand on the scanner. You just need to have the uh, bracelet near the scanner. Yes. Which is important for the theory that somebody used the number nine bracelet to uh, kill Snake. So I guess now our viewers can do the math. Mm -hmm. Nine plus digital root of three. Nine plus two plus something gives you a digital root of three. Okay, so Junpei has basically figured it out. Which is that a surprise to you? He's suddenly smart now. <laughs> a little bit, since he spent most of the game not being too smart, like not knowing what an electrical plug was. Yeah, no, what's a three-pronged, two-pronged adapter? I haven't seen <laughs> that. But now he's just going to explain the entire situation and confront the killer. Do you know who I am? Who am I? I'm surprised everybody else went along with this, to be quite honest. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think Santa would have said something at this point. Yeah, well, since he wasn't clued in on the trick here. Yeah. This is a trick to prove to everybody that Ace suffers from prosopagnosia. I'm fairly certain with this disease, though, um, it's just that they, they can't distinguish facial features, so... Since Santa and Junpei have such distinct hair, he should be able to tell that they're not the same person. Yeah, but he's saying they switched clothes. Yeah, well, it's taking Ace. Ace, Ace isn't buying the excuse that he's Santa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and of course he goes to, to math. Yep. <laughs> well, why doesn't he, like, take a look at the bracelet that the guy has, right? If he's looking right at Junpei. <laughs> Junpei's hiding his hand behind his back. Mm-hmm. Junpei wearing his, um... What do you call it? Flannel. <laughs> Look how sad Ace is now. <laughs> he's so sad okay. because everybody knows he's disabled. <laughs> he's going to say something like that in this video. He accuses Junpei of, you know, picking on the handicapped. <laughs> Junpei is a jerk. 
I mean, he didn't murder anyone, so he's not that big of a jerk. Well, Santa's the real jerk. I mean, if <laughs> Santa would have been a lot meaner during his reveal. Uh huh. Which makes us wonder why nobody else catches on. Why doesn't Lotus catch on? <laughs> yeah, someone who's smarter than Junpei, how did they not catch on? Yeah, how did they not f solve the murder mystery? Well, he's the only one who knows that the dead body isn't really Snake. Yeah, I guess that's true. Since uh, Clover did not go in to see the body. Yeah. Well, no, no, scratch, scratch that. That doesn't have anything to do with determining who his killer is. <laughs> I guess that's true, yeah. Well, I mean, it sort, of, it sort of is important because the killer has to... Well, because there's another point coming up. Since it's not Snake, the person who did kill him had to have thought it was Snake just because he was dressed like him. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you could you could have also done the math here to figure out who would the uh, yeah like the we killer. did like we did. <laughs> yeah. You could have also solved it from the math. Yeah. I think it was you, Ace. You killed him. There are five pairs of eyes on him, so there are five other people here. <laughs> I mean, one of them is Ace, so of course Ace was looking at him. <laughs> Where were the other people looking? Were they just like not paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Junpei has three pieces of evidence. Which proves that Ace is the killer. I was hoping we get sort of a courtroom scene here, like Phoenix Wright, but um, unfortunately not. No more Phoenix Wright references. Paul's not here. We don't have to keep <laughs> up the charade. But if someone is playing the game called a bingo, we need to get a couple in there for them. Uh, okay. So, but I think we've met our quota now. Okay, so our first piece of evidence. Ace drugged himself on purpose because he didn't want anybody going through door three and finding the dead body. So that that was his real reason for drugging himself. I mean, it's sort of dangerous for him here, though, because at that point, he didn't know the doors led back around to where he was. So it, it could have just been that he was stuck there now. Well, besides, the people went back and opened up door number three anyway, once he woke up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, yeah. he only bought himself like an hour or so. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so <laughs> either they were going to be able to come back around and get him where they could just open up the door anyway, or they wouldn't be able to come back around, and then he'd be stuck there and die when the, the game ended. So it wasn't a very good plan on his part. It was a horrible plan, because you've got the number two thing, you know, the number two bracelet you don't have anymore. Yeah, I know it's on the other side of the door. He's stuck. He's only got the nine and the one. Yeah, so that means he would have to make a plan with Lotus if he wants to get out alive. <laughs> or possibly two other people. I don't know, June and Junpei, maybe. I can't do the math. Let me see. What would give us an eight? You need an yeah, you need an eight. Yeah. So uh three and five. Okay. Yeah. Who three is? Santa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they could form a guys club and just leave. <laughs> I don't know, I, I could see Ace and Lotus uh, working together. <laughs> Lotus seemed like a shady character. Well, uh, not that she's shady, but that she seems really driven to actually get off the ship before she dies. <laughs> One of the only characters who is actually concerned about the time. Because <laughs> it's been an hour. How long ago was it when they said they only have an hour left? That was like 15 <laughs> minutes ago. Yeah, they're, I mean, at this point, they're pretty much screwed because he's spending all this time explaining the, uh, the situation to everyone. I mean, what's the point of explaining the situation and exposing Ace as a killer? I know it's the right thing to do, but, you know, wait until you get off and then bring him to justice. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> at this point now everyone's going to die because Junpei had to give this hour-long sermon here. Yeah. 
Well, it's the only time he's figured out something on his own. He really wants to show off. <laughs> Two motives, yeah. Yeah, as we learned, Ace was one of the people who did the Nonary game uh, nine years ago. That is correct. Why did he do that? That's a reveal we haven't really felt the import of that reveal yet. <laughs> I guess we'll figure that out later. Or, won't figure it out, but I mean, it will probably become more important later on. We haven't learned that much about the game nine years ago yet. No. And I don't think you will in this um, this video, at least. Yeah. Hey, somebody else is speaking. So here's a question. What if Zero was just lying? How do we know that the facts on the piece of paper are true? <laughs> I mean, that's a good point, since he also did kidnap all of them and placed them on a ship of death. He's not the world's most trustworthy person. <laughs> and how does Santa know that Ace is um, a pharmacist? Um, Santa is actually the one who told Junpei, I think. Yeah, he is. But, I mean, when did that come up in conversation when Ace and Santa were talking to each other? <clears throat> Santa said that it's when they were alone at some point, he said he was a pharmacist. Or, I think it's when they all separated to look at the doors. Yeah, yeah, we'll just say that. Sure. <laughs> they never went through a door together alone in this playthrough. Correct. Okay, so Ace is feeling very, um, cornered at this point. <laughs> but they still need him to get off the boat, so... Janitaru Hongu. Is that how you pronounce it? Sure, that looks right. Janitaru... Um, I forget. I learned Japanese pronunciation a couple of years ago, but... That's for the Nancy Drew game where she goes to Japan, actually. <laughs> so now we have met our quota for Phoenix Wright references and Nancy Drew references in this video. Yeah, yeah. People were complaining because I mispronounced the names of all these Japanese cities, so I actually bothered to learn Japanese pronunciation <laughs> just for the, like those two weeks when I played the game, so my commentary would not offend all the people who know Japanese. Huh? Huh? Wha what? Christ. Oh wait, no, I did a Sean Connery voice for him. Yeah, that's right. Whoa! Junpei? <laughs> what did he take? That's not very nice. No. He's unconscious. Let's rob him. Well, that's a nice gotcha, though. That's a nice trick. Mm -hmm. Which is something thieves do in real life, too, anyway. Have you heard about that? I have not. It's, it's a... Inform us about the, the thievery trick. Um, usually, you know, when people see, like, a sign which says thieves in the area, guard your valuables, people unconsciously, like, you know, check to make sure they still have their wallet and things. And so if you're a thief and you hang around the sign, you will just stand by and pe you watch people point out where the valuables are. Because mm. they're double-checking them. It's weird that people are putting up signs that thieves are in the area since, I mean, thieves are mobile, so they can move from area to area. Yeah. So some thieves, you know, put up the signs themselves. Oh. I don't know, it's something I learned when I went to Europe, because they warned us that there would be thieves all the time in Europe, but I didn't get 
robbed. <laughs> That's good. Somebody tried to, but I didn't fall for it. It was really... World's worst thief ever. She tried to lure me in <laughs> with, um... You know, a, a, a flower, right? She's, you know, walking around. You're a pretty, pretty flower. She's like, pretty boy, here, take the flower. She's a Spanish. She called me guapo, which is handsome, which... Immediately uh. to me was a clue because, you know, <laughs> women who are, you know, 40 years older than me don't just say that out of the blue and call me handsome. <laughs> As we um, can see in the video here, Ace now has his crazy eyes. Yeah. His evil killer side has taken over. Yep. <laughs> so he has no emotion or remorse or interest. Now he's just bored. Yeah. My purpose was to attain the number nine bracelet. Nine is a potent <laughs> ally in the game. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now we're explaining that number nine is very useful. Yeah, so he's basically going to explain the entire murder plot. You know, fill, yes. in, fill in all the gaps, which is which is good. Yeah, it's nice of him. Um, instead of trying to escape or anything, he's letting us know what he did, in case we had any, like, residual questions left over. Yeah, so the knife. Yeah, the knife came from the ninth man. So that's presumably the knife, the knife used to kill Clover. If I had to guess, yeah. And he kept it with him this whole time? Wow. Okay, so Ace just went back to this room and he saw a snake. Or the person dressed up like snake. When they were all searching for snake. Mm -hmm. Oh no, this only leads me to ask the question, where is the real snake? Mm -hmm. Somebody, I guess they must have knocked him out or drugged him or something, because they clearly got rid of snake, stripped him, put his yeah. clothes on somebody else. <laughs> Yeah, Snake is naked somewhere, so he might not be dead, but he seems to be in an equal amount of trouble. Well, maybe the person just automatically, you know, had another set of clothes. Just by <laughs> that looked like that? They kept that around in their wardrobe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Zero clearly went through a lot of trouble. <laughs> so, I mean, either Zero stripped... Snake, or just had a spare set of clothes which looked like snakes. Because clearly the person, whoever Zero is, had this planned ahead of time. To have a fake snake. Mm -hmm. So I guess Zero was purposely trying to get Ace to commit murder. Mm -hmm. That's what it's looking like. Ace has been set up by Zero. So where is the real snake? Huh. Hmm, I guess we'll find out. So, okay, maybe at the same time um, Zero did that, Zero also put the uh, circuitry back into the doors. Yes, I seem to remember that being a problem at that time as well. Yeah, the, the door, none, none of the doors there had the uh, bottom part to make it work. So Zero was just purposely trying to separate them all up to make it easier to kidnap S Snake, probably. So Zero purposely, um, you know, <laughs> purposely left the uh, doors you know, unable to work, so everybody would have mm -hmm. to split up and take a different section of, like, the 80 different rooms. So it was all a complex plot to make Ace kill whoever it is that Ace killed. Yes. And then he went a step further and killed, killed poor Clover on the off chance that Snake had told her something. <laughs> Not a very good reason, Ace. But I don't no. <laughs> think his reason for killing Snake was all that good either. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if the the blind individuals can be able to identify you. After nine years. Yeah. 
I mean, was he there nine years ago? Well, yeah, he was, but Snake never saw him nine years ago. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming, is he actually wasn't around, like, sitting around during the game. Yeah, okay, so here's the conversation. When he killed Clover. So why did he take Clover all the way up here, still? <laughs> this breaks the question, why, why was Clover all the way back up there? Uh -huh. Okay, so she did go through the captain's quarters. No, wait, no, she didn't. She didn't go through the captain's quarters. Wow, I'm so confused. She noticed the bracelet was missing. Yeah, but you know, when Junpei went back and looked... I mean, he already did a look inside the hallway. Ace didn't kill him for that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think what Ace is saying is, um, he's answering the questions we had earlier, was, why was she up there? He just managed to, um, he just managed to find her there. He didn't actually kidnap her and take her all the way up there. Correct. When everybody was looking for Clover, he just killed her. So about, like, ten minutes before they find her, found her body. Which still makes us wonder why she managed, I mean, why she closed the door behind her. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, put stuff up against the door. And how she was able to uh, leave through the exit before the other two. Well, presumably she just figured out the puzzle on her own. Yeah, and, and then just... For some reason it took a long time to her as she left. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Maybe the puzzle just resets automatically. Nah, probably not. We're not actually going to go through the uh, dungeon rooms um, during either of these playthroughs, so we're not going to... I mean, I don't remember that exit, the exit door puzzle to that room. Yeah, I can't recall off the top of my head either. Something about the toilets. That was a real... That was a tough room puzzle. Yeah. As I recall. It's like the toilets or this... Like, it was like two small little prison cells and you had to do something in each of them. Yeah, and they were identical. Mm-hmm. What is this? This is a piece of paper inside the safe? I think so. So here's my question. When Ace, Ace opened the safe and grabbed that piece of paper, why did he leave behind the one which identifies him as <laughs> I don't know. Cradle Pharmaceuticals? Mm -hmm. Worst villain ever. <laughs> I mean, he was the one who opened the safe, right? Yeah. Because someone had to have before them, that's why the rest was moved. No, I think he was admitting right there, that piece of paper. Oh. He's, I think what he was saying is that he opened the safe. Perhaps Sneak is zero. Well, that would make more sense, right? Yeah, if, if Snake actually took off his own clothes, rather than someone strip him. He had, he had a change of clothes somewhere else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And that would also explain why he's wearing such distinctive clothing, is because he purposely wants to fool this person. Right. Okay, well, it's all over, everybody. <laughs> Puzzle solved. That's why, that's why I sort of paused there. We're finished with the confession. We have the entire murder story all wrapped up. But they still have to get off the ship. So this, this might not be a good time to start fighting with them. We're gonna leave your ass here to rot! <laughs> you can't, because you need his number to leave. Ouch. Nice. What you ever do to you, Ace? Yeah. 
I'm still not quite sure why he killed her, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know either. He's evil, that's why. Yeah, he sort of lost it at this point. Mm -hmm. All right, so Ace likes tough women. Good to know. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess the guys really do go for girls like Lotus rather than... Poor, um... poor June. Oh, well. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. I know what's happening uh -oh. here. Uh-oh. It was a tr uh -oh. He doesn't really like her. No. Nope. <laughs> he likes her as a hostage because he went back and got the gun. Uh, why would you leave the gun, Junpei? I've already killed two. No, three people. Don't think I'm <laughs> ready to make it four. I've lost count already. Well, he's counting the ninth man. <laughs> I don't know, Lotus's hair looks kind of weird in that picture. Uh -huh. I'd, I'd have to see a picture of her normal, I guess, but it seems like her hair wouldn't fall in that fashion. No. Oh, and now he's confessing about how he killed the, the ninth man. Just in case people were confused about that murder plot line. Uh -huh. if he, like, for someone who wants to get off the ship, he's taken a long time to confess everything he's done. Well, you think he would just, you know, automatically just start killing everybody. You know, he's got a revolver. Just kill them and take their bracelets. This still isn't a good idea on the ninth man's part here. Because, I mean, even if he believes... Ace that it only needs one to deactivate the dead. Like, he can't get through the next door after this. He's only one dude. Yeah. And of course, you know, he lied to me. It was him. He was the one who did this. <laughs> Instead of saying, you know, somebody's name. Yeah. <laughs> he used, you're using way too many pronouns there. Just all you have to say is Ace, and then everyone knows what's up. Yeah, really, I had four reasons for killing him. He goes through them all. Ace, <laughs> you have to get off the ship, man. Number one, the number nine tool would have been useful. Or no, 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 it could have been a threat. How could somebody have used the number nine bracelet as a threat against him? I don't know. <laughs> one, it's useful for him, and two, you know, it could have been useful for somebody else. They could have cut him out of the loop, I guess you know, replaced him with a number nine bracelet. Okay, re <laughs> re that guy knows that he's ace. The, uh, they mm -hmm. about what happened nine years ago. <laughs> and number four, he wanted to see if the person really would die. Wow. <laughs> really, really cold, ace. <laughs> I think he could have picked a, a different rule to try to break. You've told us everything else, Ace. Just tell us this now. Yeah. Aw, oh, poor Lotus. Yeah. So, so, the gun is not actually against her temple. It's like against her cheek. It's underneath her eye, really. Why don't you tell her, Santa? Talk about your idea to leave the gun behind. <laughs> Gun has a really long barrel. Well, it's the same gun from um, Back to the Future, the game. <laughs> Which, if you watch her video walkthrough for that, we also comment that gun has an unusually long barrel. 
It's a very shiny gun, to be honest. It is. <laughs> Wait, why is it plated gold? It's 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 from the original timeline. <laughs> or I mean, like they said, from the original ship, I think. Oh. Okay. The Titanic. I think that was the idea, but apparently somebody gave it a nice, you know, shine or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they painted it. Coat of wax. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we go. East is going to leave with Lotus and just take off through the number nine door. Mm -hmm. Okay, so of our characters left behind, which one of them, I mean, which ones can get through the other number nine door? So we got seven, five, six, and... Seven, five, six, and uh, three. And three. Add them all up in your head, so that's, um, 7, 5, 6, 3, 7, 5 is 12, 12 plus... Huh. Yeah, so 5, 6, and 7 could go through, so Santa would be left behind. Oh, uh, that sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so if Santa's left behind, that means they need, uh, what, another 6? I don't know. Yep, I, I think if they have... I remember what oh. happens, yeah. Santa and June stay behind. Yeah, here we go. See, Santa and June are going to stay behind. Which, you know, will fortunately, you know... Fortunately or not so fortunately, they don't have to ask the question of who gets to stay behind because she, she gets sick and Santa decides to help her. Yeah. Which I have to admit is something I didn't like about either of the endings to this game. It's every single ending, June gets taken out of the equation like two hours <laughs> before the end because of her fever. Then again, Santa gets taken out of the equation here, and I, I wasn't very interested in what he... I don't think he's going to contribute very much to the situation. No, who's left? It's it's gonna have to be a Junpei and a seven. Mm -hmm. Five plus seven is uh, twelve, which is three. So they'll need six. They'll need June. Well, I. You're right. So they could also, if they have the number two bracelet and they have the number four bracelet from Clover, so they could just use those two. They don't have Clover's bracelet. Are the number? Oh, they don't have Clover's bracelet. Okay. Presumably, well, Ace picked up Clover's bracelet. Well, I know she has a fever, but you think she'd take off the scarf? Yeah, or something. The... She looks like she has an undershirt underneath her overshirt. <laughs> Brilliant commentary there. Yep. <laughs> hey, she's wearing an overshirt. Maybe she's got an undershirt. I mean, if I was burning up from a cold, I might. I mean, at least lose the scarf. Yeah. Get some water to drink. I don't know where she'd get any water. Yeah, I don't think there's any water on the boat. They don't have, like, a, a refreshments table on this hostage situation. Well, no. The, the, <laughs> wasn't there a bar? There was a bar in the casino. And <laughs> it's true. <laughs> we get her some alcohol. I think Seven drank all of it, though, so we're out of luck. Oh, well. Well, they were in the bathroom. You think you would have at least tried the faucet? <laughs> I think they did, didn't they try the sink in one of the bathrooms and it didn't work? There are several bathrooms in this game, actually, That's which true. is interesting. Usually in games, they don't bother to include, like, a bathroom. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what other game am I thinking of. Like, like, Day of the Tentacle, where you've got this house with, like, 12 rooms and none of the rooms are a bathroom. <laughs> Engaged. So they have already moved through to the next door, leaving everyone all stuck on this side. I guess this is the first time we've seen the engage sign, haven't we? Um, I think you saw it on the first door you went through. I think you saw it, but it, we haven't been spending a lot of time hanging around outside a door after somebody's gone through. That's true. 
I think you said like after the ninth man jumped through the door, like yeah, a, like a doofus. Back from engaged to vacant as soon as he died. Yeah. What's that? Is it the noise from the coffin? Yep, someone's knocking again. I mean, you think the person inside would just say, hey, I'm stuck in here instead of knocking. Like, clearly sound gets through. I would be shouting or screaming if I was inside a coffin. <laughs> this person's way too polite. Hey, get me out of here! <laughs> I'm stuck Help. in here! Help! Where am I? Yeah, any of these things would be acceptable. He's just knocking very nicely. Excuse me, can you open the door? Hello, thank you. <laughs> Why is Junpei quoting Thomas Edison now? <laughs> Junpei doesn't even know who said it. Well, there are, there are probably a lot of quotes I know, but I don't know who said them. I think that's one of the problems with the internet. <laughs> is they falsely attribute quotes to like so many people. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, I've had to correct so many people on Facebook. So it's like five, you know. So if you look up one of those quotation websites, they'll give the same quotation to like five different people. <laughs> it's like no, no, no. That wasn't <laughs> that wasn't President Roosevelt. He was quoting Shakespeare. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think our society has gotten to that point where people people are that bad when it comes to um, pop culture references. I remember some somebody complaining. Um, there's an argument about you know a character going knock 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 knock, and they got in a fight over. It's like no, it's like obviously that person is getting it from Futurama. <laughs> It's like, what? no, that Futurama... No, and none of them had any idea that Futurama got it from the Three Stooges. Mm. Curly, Clearly Curly Stooges. So I'm like... It just drove me crazy. It's like, guys, come up with your own things. Rather than, if you don't know where the quote comes from, stop trying to rip off other people. Uh -huh. Oh well. So I think in our next video, in that part five, we actually start the game over again, right? Yeah, in the next video we'll start the game over again, and we will find out who is this polite person inside the coffin. <laughs> who said that? You did, and again. <laughs> Misappropriation of quotes. And you just know somebody out there is just going to quote it and say that the game came up with that quote. <laughs> <laughs> Junpei from 999. <laughs> yes. So yes, very soon, um, the coffin lid is going to open, and we'll find out who's inside. We'll find out who's inside in the next video. Yep. Do we do this at the end of every video? We just waste time until... <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. We'll just we don't know when exactly it ends specifically, but it's like a couple of seconds. <laughs> it's coming soon. But yes, you can watch the next video with us, and hopefully Paul will be back by then to keep us on task. Although I think this went pretty Whoa. well. We complained a lot less this time. It just said who it is. It's Snake. Whoop. Oh, there. <laughs> That's a surprise. I... Wait, he's wearing some sort of ceremonial robe, too. That's creepy. So somebody stripped him and then put him in those clothes. <laughs> That's what they had in their closet.